All right, let's talk some policy. Joining me, Mike Townsend, Managing Director of Legislative and Regulatory Affairs at Charles Schwab. Man with the policy details and the thoughts. Mike, thanks for being here this morning, day after. Great to see you, Oliver. I'm operating on just a couple hours of sleep, so who knows what I'll say. <laughs> all right, likewise. I've been trying to watch myself all morning to make sure I don't slip. Okay, so give us the rundown here. Where are we at? Uh, we're over 270 officially in the electoral count, right? But we don't have everything. Yeah, obviously a decisive win for uh, President Trump. And Republicans are going to take the Senate, uh, have at least 52 seats. There are a number of races that still aren't called. So you, know, you could be talking 54, maybe even 55. Uh, but, uh, you know, a decent majority there. And then the House is, is going to remain uncalled, I think, for probably a, a, a few days. There are a number of key races in California. Uh, the California, of course, notoriously slow at, at counting. Th those could be decisive. So I think we'll we'll be a little while before we know, you know, whether it's a, a trifecta for the Republicans in terms of the White House, the, the Senate and the House. All right. Uh, and when do you think what's our timeline for that? Yeah, I think late this week we should have a good uh, good sense. Um, you know, California can can push into a week or two uh, before you know, but uh, but hopefully we'll get a, a resolution in the next couple of days. Okay, uh, if um, let's run through the scenarios then. If it is uh, full sweep, uh, how does that change the outcome versus what's known right now? Yeah, you know, I think what's known right now is that tariffs uh, are going to be probably one of the front burner discussions for the markets over the next two and a half months until inauguration day. Because, you know, obviously President Trump has made some uh, very broad uh, comments around tariffs across the board tariffs. But, I, you know, I, I think some of that is going to end up being sort of negotiating tools to get some countries at, at the table. You know, I've, I've long thought that the idea of across the board tariffs on absolutely everything is, is probably a, uh, you know, a sort of a starting point for a negotiation. So I, I do think uncertainty about where tariffs are going over the next uh, couple months will be a little bit of a drag on some companies that are going to be concerned about that. Uh, but I expect we'll, you know, end up with maybe something a little less dramatic dramatic in the tariff area. But that is something that he can do pretty much without Congress. So I, I think that's one of the first things that everyone's going to be watching. Mm, OK, um, market response. Uh, does it vibe with policy in your mind? Uh, is it uh, sort of euphoria that there's just not going to be a lingering drama or contest? How are you reading the policy connection into markets now, Mike? Does anything stand out to you as particularly in line or off base? Yeah, I would say, first of all, look, I, I think the fact that we have a resolution, uh, you know, the next morning is itself a bit of a surprise. I think the markets uh, obviously like that. The markets like some some certainty. We don't have answers on, on everything, but we certainly uh, have the presidential race and, and the Senate determined. So I, I think there's some uh, positive there. And then, I, you know, I think uh, the markets are, are looking at things like taxes, uh, corporate tax rate. It, you know, if Republicans hold the, the House, I think corporate tax rate reduction is, uh, is going to be on the table. Uh, Obviously, we're going to see probably a quicker moving tax bill in 2025 if you have a Republican sweep. I mean, I think that could be done in the first half of the year. And, you know, that would extend lower individual income tax rates. It would extend uh, the estate tax, uh, possibly, you know, look at raising the cap on the deduction for the state and local tax. And as I mentioned, corporate taxes. So I certainly think that uh, that, that is part of it. I also think companies are looking at a, a lighter touch uh, in terms of regulation on some key areas capital markets, banking, cryptocurrency. Uh, I think that's uh, likely to happen. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot there for the market to uh, think is going to be you know, positive for companies uh, going forward. The uh, small cap move, the Russell, do we know details about what type of deregulatory efforts or taxes would be most relevant for those businesses? The market's making a real pronounced statement there. Yeah, I, I think the deregulatory atmosphere is, is kind of a general atmosphere right now. I don't know that anyone knows kind of exactly the specifics of how that's going to play out. There was a Supreme Court decision over the summer that that uh, basically will, will give the courts a much a larger role in the regulatory environment. I don't think anyone really knows how that's going to play out, but I think it's the general sense that there'll just be a lighter touch in, in, uh, in, in regulation. On, on some of the taxes, you know, uh, Trump put out a lot of different tax 
tax ideas beyond just the expiring tax cuts, uh, you know, things like uh, ending the tax on Social Security benefits and overtime pay and tip income and, and those sorts of things. So, you know, I think small businesses are, are looking at, at those potential benefits and, and potential benefits for their workers uh, that could uh, that could really be a positive. So, you know, I think there's definitely enough here that uh, the the different sectors are, are, are probably looking at what benefits them and, and thinking this is a pretty good atmosphere. And I think the markets are reacting that way. All right. Uh, a few specifics here as far as uh, 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 individuals go. Uh, Trump has said and the people around him have pushed for the removal of SEC chair Gary Gensler. Trump at one point said, quote, day one. Uh, we have Vivek Ramaswamy on uh, a, a little bit ago who told us, to, you know, he wants to cut millions of government jobs. Uh, so I guess let's start with one they've highlighted. Can they take Gensler out early on? Sure. I mean, obviously, there's, uh, you know, new administration comes in, you have uh, changes in all those uh, agency heads and, and cabinet positions. You know, I, I laugh about what's being done on day one, because it's a really long list of what's going to be done on day one. <laughs> and day. I don't know how high the, the SEC chair is on that uh, on that day one list. So, you know, I think typically resignations uh, are expected uh, mm. from the holdovers and at agencies. And and I certainly think that'll be the, uh, the case of the SEC. See, but I, I also think it'll probably be, uh, you know, multiple months before uh, they get to the SEC uh, chair confirmation. So, you know, it could be a while. There's lots of stuff on that uh, day one agenda, as I said, and, and not everything can be done. I think the idea of, uh, of what's going to happen to the federal workforce is something that's going to be really merit watching uh, because, you know, changes uh, across the board, sort of, uh, you know, career employees and, and how that's handled. Uh, that that could be a seismic shock, at least here in Washington, that uh, is going to be uh, very, very interesting to watch. All right. Uh, Mike, I know that, as you pointed out to us so many times before, that the Fed uh, and Jerome Powell has a term uh, separate from the uh, cabinet uh, uh, cycle. Uh, but what's possible here? I mean, and to your point about folks resigning, if they see the writing on the wall, this one to me seems like a pretty big one for markets. One that maybe there's been difference in terms of the market's opinion. The market seems to have generally loved Jerome Powell. Uh, stocks up, obviously. Inflation's come off. But then part of the whole campaign message was that the economy is a disaster right now. So a lot of times the Trump team talked negatively about Powell. But who knows if that was just campaign talk uh, as far as trying to paint the economy poorly. I mean, what are the range of possibilities here for Powell? Yeah, I think this is going to be one of the most interesting things to watch because, you know, on the campaign trail, uh, the, the, the president-elect had quite a lot to say about how he'd like a greater role in uh, monetary policy decision making. Uh, he, he actually walked some of that back over the course of the campaign. You know, I, I would be really surprised if he tried to fire Jerome Powell, for example. I think there's a lot of legal questions and and that would create a big legal headache uh, that I'm not sure that 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 distraction is is something that uh, President elect Trump wants to to go down the path on. And as you said, you know, there's no Fed governor whose term ends before uh, the early part of, of 2026. So, you know, unless there's a resignation, which certainly happens, uh, you know, he won't have an, a, ch a chance to appoint anyone for quite a while into his uh, into his term. Uh, that said, you know, what does he mean by he wants more influence over over Fed decision making? Uh, I think that's going to be something that the markets are going to be really interested to watch. And and now obviously we have the weird situation of having a Fed meeting <laughs> starting today and uh, and tomorrow. I don't expect the election outcome to change uh, the direction of, of where we expect things to head tomorrow. But, you know, does it increase the chances of a pause uh, in December? You know, I, I would say that those chances have gone up. So another thing to watch. OK. All right. Uh, Mike, uh, is there anything we're missing here? Any wild card stuff um, that uh, uh, folks have underappreciated? Any thing that you feel goes underreported in this analysis? Well, I, I would say, you know, watching the House of Representatives still is really, really important because we're having a different conversation if Democrats eke out a couple seat majority in the House. Uh, and, and that's still on the table as a possibility. If that happens, then we're having a very different discussion next year about taxes and that sort of thing. That the House 
potentially acting as a little bit of a break on things. So I think until we know the House of Representatives uh, majority, uh, the, you know, we need to tamp expectations down a bit for uh, for what might happen. And, you know, I, I think uh, the, the Republicans understand that they're waiting for those results, too. Uh, so that's going to be, you know, to me, the piece that's going to be really important here over the next several days. OK, Mike, great stuff. Thanks for being here this morning. Know you're busy right now. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for the prep as well. Mike Townsend, Managing Director, Legislative and Regulatory Affairs at Charles Schwab. Come on.